This is Jocko Podcast number 177 with Echo Charles and me, Jocko Willink. Good evening, Echo. Good evening. A few days later, when I walked downstairs to go work out, I saw Uncle Jake's bag packed up sitting by the door. That's when it hit me. The summer was almost over and Uncle Jake was leaving again. I went out to the garage to work out and Uncle Jake was already there. Last workout with me for the summer, he said with a smile. I can't believe it's over already. Summer always goes by so fast, I told him. Yes, it does, Uncle Jake said quietly. And life does the same thing. I wasn't sure what Uncle Jake meant by that, so I asked, what? You'll see, Mark. He said, life goes by quickly, like a summer day. It never seems that way when you're young, but when you get a little older, you'll see life goes by fast. So don't waste any time. You don't get a second chance. Uncle Jake stood for a minute looking at me with a serious face. Then he gave me a little smile and said, speaking of wasting time, let's stop wasting time and get this workout done. He jumped up on the pull-up bar, grabbed hold, and started knocking them out. And that is a little excerpt from the last chapter in a new book, the latest edition in the series, Way of the Warrior Could Kid, book three. The subtitle of the book is Where There is a Will. And... I wrote that part of the book because I wanted to let kids know as early as possible that that is the truth. That life goes by like a summer day. And that life is short. And if you remember when you were a kid and summer, you get out of school for the summer and it seems like you have all the time in the world. It seems like summer vacation is going to last forever. And then all of a sudden it's a blur and you look up and as soon as summer vacation has started, all of a sudden it's over. That's what I remember about summers. And that's the truth. And that's what life is like about a year and a half ago, September 29th, 2017. And September 29th is St. Michael's Day. That's the day that... Mikey Monsoor was killed in Ramadi in 2006. So on September 29th, 2017, I woke up and I was thinking about that. And I was thinking about Mikey. And later that day, I think I was actually heading up to Rosecrans National Cemetery where Mikey is buried. And I was going to go and visit Mikey's grave and while I was on my way up there I got a call and I found out that one of my mentors one of the guys that raised me in the SEAL teams a guy named Master Chief Mike Fackety he had died and he had been in a pretty hardcore battle with lung cancer even though he was a non-smoker, even though he was a triathlete, even though he worked out all the time, he got this form of lung cancer. And originally the doctors told him he was gonna live for six months, but that was in, I think, 2012. He had retired in 2001. And I sitting there thinking about Fackety and actually BTF Tony talked about him, called him Fack when he was on the podcast because we all called him FAC. But I remembered just a bunch of different things about FAC. And and one of the things that I remembered was I had come back from my third deployment. So this is in the 90s, back in the day. And I, I had done my third deployment and I had been moved into the training department at SEAL Team 1. So instead of doing a workup and going on deployment the way the teams used to be set up, you would you would go into training cell and the team trained itself. The, the training department at SEAL Team 1 trained the platoons at SEAL Team 1. Later it became 
that we had a big centralized training command. That's what I ran before I got out, before I retired. I ran that, the trade at on the West Coast, but it used to be each team had their own training cell, and that's how you would train platoons to get ready for their deployments. And of course, nobody really wanted to be in training cell because it meant you couldn't go on deployment, and that's why you joined the SEAL teams is to go on deployment. And for whatever reason, we in a bunch of us from my platoon that I'd gone through buds with, a bunch of guys we'd done, all done three platoons, and they kind of we all kind of got thrown into training cell at the same time. And we'd been in there for a couple days. I mean, maybe less than a week. We'd come back from deployment. We'd get put into training cell. And I, I kind of forget what happened, but a couple guys that were getting ready to deploy got hurt. In fact, it might have been guys had gotten hurt as soon as they got over there. Or maybe they didn't go on deployment. The guys that went and replaced us, all of a sudden they needed a couple guys. And at quarters in the morning, that's when at SEAL Team 1, they used to have quarters in the morning where you all stand up and line up, sort of like your typical military formation. Everyone would kind of line up and by platoon, and the platoons would all report in. That was an old school Team 1 deal right there. And then if there was any important announcements to make, then the announcements would get made, and then everyone would go about their day. Well, the announcement that got made that morning was, hey, we need two guys to go on deployment. Is there anyone here that feels like going on deployment or can go on deployment? And, of course, it's a big deal, right, to just pick up and go and leave for six months and it was actually my roommate at the time who had been my roommate who I went through buds with and who I did three platoons with. I went through SEAL tactical training with, with him and we were actually roommates that entire time so we were, we were tight, he's my brother. And when they asked this question of, hey, is there anybody here that can go on deployment like tomorrow or the next day? And basically out of the whole team, it was him and me. We raised our hands and said, yeah, hey, we'll go because at that time, you know, we were just single team guys. We didn't have anything else. We literally had nothing else. You could put our whole world into two cruise boxes and we could ship anywhere in the world. We didn't care. We had no attachments. We had didn't care about anything. So, of course, we raised our hands. And as soon as our hands went up, Master Chief Faculty gave us a glare because he was the guy that was in charge of training cell. So he gave us a glare and quarters ended and he goes, he said, hey, why don't you guys come upstairs and talk to me real quick. <laughs> and I was thinking, okay, we must have done something wrong. And you, sometimes you didn't know what you did wrong, but I, me and my buddy, we figured we'd done something wrong. So we went up there and actually, actually now that I think about it, we, he brought us into the chief's mess and we were like E4s or E5s at the time. And so going, getting pulled into the chief, chief's mess, I'd never been in there before. Mm. <laughs> and I was like scared thinking, well, what did I do? I thought I did something wrong. I thought th- th- I left a trail of some crime I'd committed mm. and now we're getting busted. And we get up there and basically he reamed us out. And he says, listen, you guys need to be in training cell. And he was making great points. I didn't recognize that time. You know, he said, look, if you want to be professionals, if this is where you're going to learn a lot, we need good guys to be teaching the rest of the platoons. That's why you're in here. You're not going on deployment. Shut up. And I'm pulling your names out of the hat and they'll find two other people that can go. We'll send some new guys over there. It doesn't matter. So that's what it was. That was this little story. It was, it was funny because, you know, we were, it was just funny for multiple reasons when I thought back about it. Just the fact that you're in a point in your life, I think I was probably like 23 or 24 years old and just just think about right now if someone says, hey, can you just leave for six months tomorrow? Mm. I mean, there's not too many people that can just pull up and do that. So there's that. There's the fact that, you know, faculty was bringing us into the chief's mess and we were all nervous about that. And then the fact that, you know, faculty, what he was actually doing was trying to look out for us and trying to look out for our careers and trying to look out for the SEAL team. He was trying to do the right thing. And it was, was one of those, one of those, little stories and there's just all these little stories like that 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 make up that whole era of my life that whole time as a young enlisted guy at SEAL Team 1 it's this whole bunch of memories and 
when he died, I got this feeling that those memories, those those days are over. Like they're gone. Because at least partially, because when fact was around, like part of those memories are facts memories. Like only he could tell us what he was thinking at that time. And when he dies, when he died, then, the, then those memories are gone. And I can't ask him about them. I can't go and have a beer with him and talk about that time and hear his side of it. Like, no, they're, they're not here. They're gone. And as I was, you know, again, going up to see Mikey Monsoor at Rosecrans, and I continue to think about that and thinking about the memories that Mikey had and how those are gone. But I didn't have too much time to dig into those thoughts because the next morning, September 30th, 2017, that's when I got word that the Delta Platoon commander, my brother, Seth Stone, had died as well. And all kinds of memories died with him. I mean, I got my half of them. But it's half. It's incomplete conversations and jokes and guitar jams. And then on top of those, I get little. Like Seth was incredibly smart. And he'd give me little ideas, little thoughts. But only the beginning of them because there's millions of things to talk about. And you think you got your whole life to, to consider those things. but you don't and I get that we can try and talk about them or we can try and write them down and we can do everything in our power to to try and hang on to those things but the fact of the matter is you you can't you can't preserve them in their true form. It's just gone. And as I thought about that and as I continue to think about that and try and figure out what can we do if we can't preserve these memories, then what can we do? And I think the best thing that we can do is try and make more. Try and make more. Make more memories. So, so keep in mind what Uncle Jake said. Life goes by like a summer day. So you better take advantage of it. And you best make yourself some memories along the way. And with that, Echo. Yes. It's been a little while since we <clears throat> did some Q&A. Yes, sir. What do you got? We got some got questions some Q&A. from the interwebs. All right. We'll go into it. First question. What do you do when the boss always says we can't, but doesn't offer logical and reasonable alternatives to make positive forward changes? Should one just do what they think is best and not listen <laughs> to the boss? Uh, okay. First of all, what we want to do is we want to support the boss. Mm-hmm. We want to build a relationship. 
with the boss. What's the best way to support the boss? Which the best way to build relationships is to be a performer. Be a performer inside the box, right? That the boss has said you can't do this, you can't do that. Cool. Mm -hmm. We're going to do the best we can inside the box. And once you do that, once you once you actually once you actually are a performer, then you have leverage. Then you can actually talk about a different way of doing things. You can bring up a legitimate idea to the boss and they may, well, they have a better chance of listening to you. So that's what you gotta do. You gotta play the game a little bit. You gotta, you gotta become a performer. You gotta do the, what it is, the way they want it done to the best of your ability, be successful with it. And then once you've built up some clout and some relationship and maybe a little political capital, then you can present a new idea. And when you present the new idea, have the facts lined up. Don't go in there half cocked and present your idea and hopefully gets cleared. Now, that's one, that's section A. <laughs> section B is, do you gotta make things happen sometimes? Yep. And depending on how, like, it's that whole thing of, it's better to beg forgiveness than ask for permission. Yeah. That's a that's a it's 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 a it's a tool. It's definitely a tool. Mm-hmm. If you abuse it, you're going to get crushed. Oh, yeah. If it's one of those things where the the boss has told you not to do something and you decide, well, I'm going to do it anyways, and I'll just beg for forgiveness. They actually told you not to do it. Yeah. That's not where you're supposed to use that tool. Yeah. That's just that's just that's just unsat. Right. It's unsat. For unsat. Sure. Yeah. If it's something where, well, I kind of suspect that the boss might not want it this way, but you know what? Chances are it's going to go in my direction, and chances are it's going to be beneficial, and chances are the boss might not even find out. And if the boss does find out, this isn't something that they've ever declared hostile on, right? So you'll be okay in that situation to to beg for forgiveness, but don't abuse that tool. And then what you do is you start, if when you're inside the, hey, I'm gonna beg for forgiveness, then you can start actually doing something and developing a standard operating procedure that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And then once you get it solidified, you go to the boss and say, hey boss, we've been doing this a different way. I wanna let you know, I wanna show you what we've been doing. Mm -hmm. Cause we, you know, you know, boss, we never really had a specific way of getting this done. And I know some other people did it like this and some other people did it like that. We came up with a methodology. I actually wrote the whole thing out for you so you can see exactly what we're doing. Boom. Who's yeah. going to say no to that? Plus mm-hmm. it's been successful 80 times. Boom. We're good. Mm-hmm. So, so that's what you want to do. That's pretty, pretty straightforward. Don't, don't just straight disobey the boss unless the boss is telling you to do something that's going to get someone killed or it's illegal or whatever. Mm-hmm. But if they're just have a different idea or something, just go with it, execute it, become a good performer, and then once you have that relationship built, you'll have all kinds of influence over your boss. I always had crazy influence over my bosses. Yeah. I don't wanna sound, I don't wanna say in an arrogant way. Mm-hmm. It wasn't like I was manipulating my bosses, but my bosses, like, I was honest with my bosses and they, I did good work, and so when I said, hey boss, is, is, are we sure we should do it this way? They'd be like, well, what do you think? And I'd yeah, say, well, yeah. here's what I think, and then we'd get shit done. So, mm-hmm. pretty straightforward. Yeah. Pretty straightforward. Yeah, that asking for forgiveness thing. I th- it's a risky move. Well, yeah. It's not a risky move. But sometimes it's a great, great move. You yeah, know? if you kind of like how you said, like, don't abuse it. Where you know, there's there's levels to it. Yeah. Where there's like little things. Thirty two c- levels. <laughs> 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 so like, if you if there's one that's like how you said, like he told you not to oh, do yeah, something, yeah, and this yeah. goes for like anyone, like your anyone you're dealing with, like your, even your friends, kind of yeah. thing, you know. Where if they if you know for a fact that they don't want you to do it. So that's why you'd prefer not to ask for permission because you know they're going to mm-hmm. say no. But you know, it's yeah. like, bro, you shouldn't do that. And you know that. Yeah. But if it's the kind where it's like, hmm, I can see why he'd want to do it maybe this way or mm-hmm. maybe not even necessarily want to do it this way because maybe he doesn't see the benefits that we see right now. But, and he's closed minded. He's, you know, he has that reputation. So let's let's sort of do it, how you said, successfully, yep. you know, kind of thing. So, and then that's on the other side of the spectrum, yep. you know. But some people, man, they'll just like, take it to level five or whatever and be like, oh yeah, they're gonna hate this, but it's better to ask for forgiveness and permission because yeah. that's a guarantee no and forgiveness at least I can give. But Brian, you're gonna Don't damage the relationship if you do that mm-hmm. kind of stuff. Then Don't you're gonna get tightened down on. Yeah, right? you're like a now step backwards. Doing, yeah. Oh yeah, man, it's true. Don't, Don't let that happen. Don't let that happen. Next question. I'm the youngest leader in my firm's history. 
I try and implement extreme ownership and default aggressiveness in my team. Being so young, some of my elder subordinates sometimes dismiss my directives. How do I lead those people effectively? Okay, so I actually hate when I get this question or questions like this because it, it means that I've screwed up. That's what it means. I don't like to screw up, but when I see a question like this, it means that somebody has misinterpreted the message a little bit. Mm-hmm. They haven't read the dichotomy of leadership for sure, mm-hmm. in my opinion, because if you read the dichotomy of leadership, you'll see that extreme ownership and default aggressive are supposed to be balanced. Mm-hmm. And so that's what's going on here. You got someone that's like, you know what? I'm going to take extreme ownership. Hey, we're doing this my way. Yeah, this yeah. I'm the boss. I'm a leader. And that's just horrible. And everyone hates you. So, bro, you're young. They don't hate you because you're young. They're not mad at you because you're inexperienced. They don't dismiss you because um, because you are a decade younger than them. That's not why it's happening. Mm-hmm. It's happening because you are lacking humility. You haven't built up any relationship with these people. You haven't built up any leadership capital with them. You haven't asked them how they think they should do things. You haven't asked them what they've been doing for the last 22 years while you were going to middle school, <laughs> right? So come in, be humble. The, the best way to gain respect from people, and this is what's hard to do, this is what's hard to understand. Mm-hmm. You want people to respect you? Ask them a question. Listen to what they have to say. Mm-hmm. Listen to their opinion. If they come up with a good plan, use their plan. The worst way to gain respect from people is to go in and demand respect from people, yeah. is to go in and say, I'm, I'm implementing default aggressive. You've not heard of that? you never read extreme ownership, have you? I'll tell you what, that's the way we're doing it here. I'll get you a copy so you can read up and get on board with my program. These are all bad. So I'm not trying to say you sound just like that, but you might sound something like that. And you don't need to be too far off that. So appreciate that you're getting after it. But what you need to get after more is some balance. Be humble. Listen to the team. Listen to what they have to say. Ask for their input. Follow their input when you can. That's a little black belt move. It's a little black belt. It's actually a blue belt move. But blue belt, purple belt move. Like, hey, my team gives me input. I listen to them. Mm. We actually, you know, hey, Echo, how do you think we should? I think we should attack this target from the north. Okay, sounds good. Why don't we roll with that? That's a blue belt move, man. Mm. What's a a white belt move? Negative. No, the white belt move is like, hey, Echo, we're doing this. We're attacking this target from the south. You got any questions? (laughs) And you're like, well, I think I could. From the north might be a little bit better. That might be what you think, but that's not what we're doing. Plus, I'm in charge. Because I got ownership of this whole thing. And I'm I'm default aggressive. So do what I said. So don't be that guy, man. Try and back off a little bit. Try and form. As a leader, you should be looking at like one of your primary goals. If not your primary goal is to form a relationship with your team. With the people on your team. Yeah. Man, so I, get I, it done. I remember in Jiu-Jitsu one time, Greg mm. McIntyre, great train. train. Yes. He uh great train. Great train. He uh he was teaching a move and the move that he was teaching he uh, uh, apparently got from me. Mm-hmm. And so he was teaching this move or whatever mm-hmm. and uh you know, I was sitting there we're all and he was teaching he taught he taught he taught it good, taught it way mm-hmm. better than I could teach. Like yep. way better. In fact, he taught it. I simply probably could not teach this move. And he, uh, and after he was done, he was like, hey, Echo does this move really good to the class. Echo, does move. Echo, do you have anything to add to the move? And I was like, oh, I, no, I don't, I don't remember if I did. I don't mm-hmm. think I did. But just that feeling, you know, he included me in it, you know. <laughs> and man, it was so empowering, you know, yeah, even though it was, you, you know, in, in his mind. And I actually thinking back kind of in my mind, like that, that was kind of my move, you know. Yeah, what move was it? It was a, it was a guard pass move. Okay. Yeah. The one I always do to you. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on what you mean by always. But <laughs> the, yeah, but nonetheless, like just how you say, like how you ask their input kind of thing. It's yeah. like you include them in the thing. It's, and not, just it's that, not just asking it. It's actually receiving it and implementing it. Oh, that's yeah. that's the that's the key, that's the closure of the move. Man, yeah, right? that's the closure of the move, bro. I talk about like a feeling. And granted, me and Greg are good friends anyway. But I'm just saying, like, you can imagine that situation. How that how anyone would feel when you, especially if you're older than this little young buck. Who does he think he is? And yeah. then he comes to you. You're like, oh hell yeah, okay, this guy knows. Like, you know, we can we can do this together. You know, yeah. you can really get that feeling. I would imagine anyway. That's what you want to do, Mister Youngest Leader in your firm's history. 
Man, congrats on that, yeah, though. Yeah, congrats Dang, on it. Hey, you're getting after it. What got you there may not get you to the next level. What got you there might have been like being aggressive and making things happen and stepping up. That's cool. Mm. But if you piss off everyone in your department, that's not going to work out good for you. They'll start to undermine you. They'll sabotage you. So you got to be careful. Yeah, it's rough. Check. Next uh, question. I mean, okay, is there a possibility that everyone in the department, you got put in there to straighten things out? That's a different question. That's a different question. Let me tell you something else. When you're getting, when people are dismissing what you're saying, that's a horrible sign. I, one of the leadership books that we covered, the rule was don't give commands that you that that aren't going to be followed. Because hmm. every time you give a command that that you know isn't going to be followed, that's not going to work out good for you. It's reinforcing the fact that no one needs to listen to you. Hmm. So don't don't be giving orders that are being dismissed. If somebody doesn't do something, you go, hey man, I know that I might have come across a little wrong when I was talking to you about, you know, getting this done, this pro this part of this task done. And I see it's still not done. Is there is there some support that you need for me? Is there some help that you need for me? Because this is important. Look, I probably didn't do a good job of explaining why it's important, but it's actually connected to this larger project that we're doing over at headquarters. Mm -hmm. And this is our part of the task. And I don't, I don't think I explained that very well, but do you need anything else for me to to maybe move this along? You can't just allow things to be for you to talk to for you to give directions and they just get blown off. Yeah. Like that's not good. And I'm and what I'm not saying is, oh, you blew off my order, now I'm gonna go high order on you. <laughs> right? That's not what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense too, because man, if I if I had a boss who I was I was primed to dismiss any of his directives. Yeah. And it happened, and it happened successfully. Like, oh, I dismissed yeah. it, and there was really no real repercussions. Oh, you better believe I'm picking and choosing what I'm following. Oh, yeah. And by the way, that's a, that, he's testing the envelope anyways. He's testing to see you know, what he can get away with. Because like, he sees you're young, yeah, young buck huh. rolling in here. Things he's going to tell me what to do. Watch this. I'm yeah, not yeah. going to listen to you. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Now, if you fly off the handle and go nuts, you know what? You'll get them to do it immediately. Yeah. And then guess what? You're going to get undermined. You're gonna yeah. get usurped. You're gonna get. They're gonna have the project fail just so they can get rid of you. They're gonna laugh at you. Yeah, that's bad. As the as the, as you're getting walked out by the HR department. <laughs> so you gotta be careful, man. You gotta be careful. That's what I'm saying. Balance these things out. Balance extreme ownership. Get the book Dichotomy of Leadership. That's what it's about. It's about being balanced. Cool. Next question, Jocko. What do you do when people treat you like a doormat? And then when you finally put your foot down, they lose their minds. Mm -hmm. I try to be agreeable, but there's a limit. When I stand my ground, people are act shocked. Any advice? Yeah, so, so this is actually kind of the same thing, right? You need to be balanced because what's happening with this dude, I assume, is that sitting around, getting getting like a pushover, like a doormat, people are kind of walking all over him. Then all of a sudden he does an instant 180 and goes, get, puts his foot down, right? Mm -hmm. And now you think that they're gonna do a 180. You think that they're gonna say, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to, oh, sorry, Echo, I didn't I didn't know that that offended you, I'm sorry. No, when you do that, they're like, what's wrong with you, yeah, bro? you just started tripping. Yeah, yeah, you're freaking out over nothing. So, of course, when you stand their ground, they're gonna be shocked, right? Which is what you're saying happened. This is like no surprise at all. So what you need to do is, is dr you gotta draw the line a little bit earlier, but without going nuts. And I think I got a good example of how you do this. Okay, let's say you got a dog. Mm. And the dog is like kind of mellow and happy and just doesn't, just all good. And then like all of a sudden, you know, you're walking by the dog one day and Wah! it bites you on the arm. <laughs> like like sure. big time, yeah. yeah, big time. How do you feel about that dog? Yeah, bad. I don't Th like that. That's dog. bad. That dog's getting put down. Yeah. Right. Yes. This dog. Let's say it bit one of your kids. Oh yeah. That that dog's getting put down. Okay. So that's that's what this guy's doing. Mm. All acting all like everything's like nothing right. bothering me, and all of a sudden biting people. Right. Huh. Think about what a dog like a normal dog does. What a normal dog does is it's if it starts getting offended a little bit or starts getting problems, it's it like stands up a little bit, right? Mm. And then it's gonna it's gonna growl. Now that's an indicator. So even a kid, even a child knows. Mm. I don't know what age, but pretty young kids know that a growling dog is a, is, is a warning. Yeah. What else do dogs do? Dogs show their teeth. That's another warning, like hey, that's another line in the sand. Mm -hmm. and, and barking, right? Because you have to bark 
And I mean, a dog barks at you, when a dog barks at you, it's got your attention, it's growling at you, you know what's gonna happen next if you keep doing whatever it is you're doing, right? You need to back away from that dog. Mm-hmm. Now, if you did, if the dog did all those things to you and then it bit you, you you'll still be mad at it, but you at least know yeah. that you kind of had it coming, right? <laughs> uh, yeah. Right? Yes, sir. Yes. So, so there you go. That's what this dude needs to do a little bit of. He needs to learn how to growl a little bit, mm-hmm. how to bark a little bit, how to show your teeth a little bit, how to just stand up, posture correct. Because there's, you know, a dog. If you know dogs at all, dogs have a posture. Mm-hmm. And they have a posture, their ears are down and their, their, their tails down. When, when they get fired up, boom, ears are up. They're on alert. Their back is, they get the cackles can stand up and everything. That means like, okay, that's, that's even before growling, that's happening. Mm-hmm. Alert. So this dude needs to learn how to come to an alert, in, improve his po- increase his posture in those moments. Not when it's getting too far, but like when somebody, when somebody gives you a little jab, you know, you can't bite them. Yeah. You got to give a little growl. Yeah. Back them off a little bit, you know? And again, this is, I don't know you, you know, so it's hard for me to say. Some people just have a hard time dealing with when people harass them. Yes. Because I think the best thing to do when somebody makes fun of me is just to like be like, yeah, that's, yeah good one. You know, like, because, you know, just like we were talking about before we started this podcast. If I let you know that whatever you just said to me bothers me, bro, I can expect you to just keep getting after that thing <laughs> until I snap, <laughs> right? Yes. So you gotta be careful. You don't wanna be all hypersensitive. The other thing to remember is, man, when people are making fun of you, it's not like they hate you most of the time. Yeah. You know, it's, it's not that big of a deal. Like people yeah. talk smack to each other, mm-hmm. right? People talk smack to each other. And, and I guarantee, this is, this, is, this is a good way to think about it. If someone talks smack to you, if you if, and then you both leave, let's say it's at work, you go home, the other person that was talking smack goes home. You go home, you're thinking about it. That person that was talking smack yeah. didn't think about it for one millisecond after he left the office, he doesn't yeah. care. He's yeah. not sitting there thinking about you. He's not thinking like, man, I'm, oh man, I'm really glad I told yeah, Echo yeah. that you know he, that he had a funny looking eyebrows. That was awesome. <laughs> I can't believe how weird his eyebrows are. Like, I mean, that's, mm-hmm. like, he's not doing that, right? He's not even thinking about it. He yeah. just went home. He's carrying on with his life. Carry on with your life. Yeah. Don't get all tied up about what these other people are thinking of you. It's not that big of a deal. No one's sitting around thinking about it. It's, it's, a, it's a perception that we have that the whole world revolves around us and that yeah. people are sitting around thinking about us all the time. Mm-hmm. It's like they're not thinking about you all the time. They don't care. They're, yeah. they're at home. There's not too many people that are actually thinking about you all the time. <laughs> Especially if they're making fun of you. Like They're, they're not thinking about that all the time. Yeah. So just relax. Take a wrap off and just... You know, try and have a little bit less tension and, you know, and try and learn to growl a little bit or at least protect your space a little bit. Yeah. And I, these are kind of contrary, contradictory things that I'm saying. One of them's like, hey, laugh at it. The other one's like kind of learn to growl a little bit. Mm. I, I would say first, the first method is better. The first method is like, hey, just laugh it off. Don't worry about it. Yeah. These people aren't thinking about you. They don't care. Mm. The, probably it's like when we had Jordan Peterson, on his, he was talking about his friend Lunch Bucket, right? Lunch Bucket, yeah. the guy that worked, in, and as soon as everyone realized that it bothered him that they called him Lunch Bucket, they everyone just called him Lunch Bucket, and then they he quit because he couldn't yeah. handle it. So don't be if you were, if someone calls you Lunch Bucket, you know, hey, cool, yeah, my mom makes a good sandwich. Mom makes a pretty good sammy, you know, <laughs> and then boom, you break out the Lunch Bucket, and you're like you know, go Embrace with it, no it. no factor. Yeah, if you start freaking out about this stuff, it's gonna drive you crazy. So yeah, man. And so that, be careful, don't freak out about stuff. If you have to, learn to stand your ground a little bit, but don't just start snapping like a dog, like, yeah. a, like a rabid dog. Yeah, that 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 is a good little escalation, that example of yeah, uh, yeah. escalating, yeah, you know, the dog a, thing. Decent. Because, I mean, getting treated like a doormat, that could look like a bunch of different yeah. things. You know, yeah. it's teasing. That seems like the obvious one or whatever, but, you know, that could be a lot of stuff. Yeah, like, yeah. that you know, could be like, hey, grab me some coffee. Yeah. Right? Sometimes people will just do that because, you haven't ever said to him, like, you know, like, hey, man, are you ever going to get me coffee? What's yeah. up? You know, you just make a joke about it. It's the it, same right? thing. Yeah, exactly. Right. Right. Like dealing with it, like as a, do- you know, if something bothers you. So, th- and I could see this maybe happening because every once in a while, like, you know, you kind of run into these scenarios where like someone does something that you, um, you don't really like, or you don't, I don't appreciate the way they treated me right mm-hmm. there. 
during that scenario. And it sort of always happens, but it's too small to make a big deal out of it at that time. And when you're a agreeable person, yeah. you're just like, all right, yeah, I'm gonna essentially I'm gonna let it slide, yeah. whatever, you know. But yeah. it happens again, yeah. then again. But I'm agreeable. I'm letting it slide. Haha. Ha, maybe I'll even laugh it off, mm. whatever. So to the other person, they're just like, whatever. They're just how you said. They're not thinking about it. They're yeah, just they, going about their business, yeah. and they're getting a laugh here and there, which instantly gets forgotten, and yeah. whatever. They keep going about their business. No, no, no factor. Meanwhile, in my head, I'm like, man, this is, <laughs> I'm getting yeah. tired of this. Yeah. I'm straight up getting tired. So it happens one day. Maybe I got a little less sleep that day or something. One teeny tiny thing. F I'm flying off the handle. Yeah. Hey, I don't appreciate this and this and that. You, do, you always do it. And they're yeah, like, do like, I always do this? Because yeah. even if I did, I, would, I didn't get any. So then you get this little reputation. People act shocked, yeah. as the guy says. You know, when I stand my ground, it's the other person. It's kind of like, well, you, why are you standing yeah. your ground right now? It doesn't make sense. Route. Like, even if I did remember all the times I've done this, yeah. you were laughing the whole time. Yeah. Like, it, it doesn't compute. You know what's you know? funny? Now that, I, now that I think, I think about times in my life, like when I was younger, and someone would stand their ground on me or yeah. whatever, and I'd be like, what are you talking about? I'd be the exact person that you're talking about saying, what are you talking about, man? Like, I have no idea what you're talking about. Yeah. Why are you freaking out right now? Yeah. And they're like, you always say stuff like this. And maybe I'd put together, like, okay, maybe I do make fun. <laughs> Whereas now that I'm older, mm. if someone was to freak out like that on me, I would instantly recognize, think to myself, like, you know what? I probably do things that I shouldn't. I probably, yeah. oh, yeah, I kind of ride this person. And that's why they're freaking out right now. Yeah. A little bit more aware yeah. of but, my impact. Yeah. Uh, and it, But in a way, you sort of had to... I mean, I'm sure you've sort of you're sort of familiar with this, you know, even like yeah. painting that picture. It's like it's obvious you're familiar with yeah, this, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, but when it's happening to you, you're kind of not. But then if you have to go <laughs> go back and do like some investigation of your whole yeah. like relationship with a person to, to understand, OK, <laughs> now I see how that could have been interpreted back yeah. last year and then maybe three months ago and then maybe last week and then like right now. OK, I'm out there, you know, then it, it but it doesn't compute naturally, you no. know. So, yeah, if you do that, the escalating dog yes. thing, it'll it'll be more clear, I think. Yeah. And, and you only, can stand your only be an escalated dog. Only escalate the dog scenario if you can't just have a good time with it and relax and not worry about it. Yeah. Which is the primary goal. Yes. But being treated like a doormat, like I said, like if, you know how like people are just so, you know, people, a uh, people pleaser type of person, like in a relationship or something. Okay. Like, um, you know, like, uh, I don't know. It, it's, I can't think of an example, but. You can't you think know. of a movie reference? That's very <laughs> pathetic. Actually, actually, I can think of you a bunch, deep. but uh, oh, oh. anyway, if you're like a people pleaser and you do yeah. everything for, you know, and then they don't do it back, you know, kind of thing yeah. like, oh, yeah, you let your, you know, husband or wife or whatever, you let them go out every Saturday just because they want to. They want to go play poker or, you know, one of these things that the, what's the common thing that they do and they do and they come back late go and drunk. And go play. <laughs> <laughs> but no, well, it'll be way worse than yeah. that. It'll be just total like whatever you need or want. You got it. And then like the one time they say, hey, I want to go shopping on this they'd be like oh shopping well you got to do this you got to do the kit you know like that kind of where, where it's like a disproportionate mm. like relationship you know kind of thing like that can i can see how it can go down with those types of relationships uh, yeah, true, you know true. like being a you can't just laugh those things off no. in life you know you get you do have to do the escalation you have thing to escalate, be like yeah. hey that's a little bit more serious yeah, yeah. true next true. question hey jocko i'm a business owner in the beginning stages of merging with another company the other company doesn't know much about what we do, but has the sales and marketing marketing we need. Just had a conference with uh, just had a conference call with them, and it didn't go well. They're wanting to change the pay structure for our co contractors as well as change how we bill our customers. Mm -hmm. All the all for the benefit of money. Cha ching. Yeah, you know, save some money on that one. Isn't it not a good idea to have? have the primary mission be about money and more so on the success of the customer or is it good to be money motivated i i have and enjoy all your books oh you know. well, well that's cool <laughs> any advice would be helpful <laughs> so that means you've read the dichotomy of leadership i hope because it, this is the answer of the day you need to be more balanced okay so if you're money hungry right which is what this is sounding like if you're money hungry correct if you're money hungry you're going to cut corners on product the product is gonna be weak or, or low quality. You're gonna do wrong by the customer, right? Because when you, when you get a chance to 
you know, the customer, if your customer placed an order, a double order by accident, they click the click thing twice, mm-hmm. and, and well, they're still gonna have to pay that restocking fee, you know, yeah. or whatever, like yeah, whatever yeah. the thing is, right? You treat customers like that, and they're gonna go, okay, well, we don't really want to shop with you anymore, and you end up with a bad reputation, and the quality's low, and no, eventually you have no more business. That's what's gonna happen. So, so no, we can't go hardcore money grubbing just that's our that's our focus Mm -hmm. other end of the spectrum is hey we're paying our contractors too much is that possible yes it's possible you're giving your customers too much you're giving them too good of a price point Mm -hmm. and guess what's now going to happen same thing you're going to not have a business anymore so Mm -hmm. one you have a you your business goes out of business because you're because you don't have any business anymore because you've treated your customers bad and the contractors don't want to work with you so you have you end up shutting down mm. this one's opposite you're you everyone loves you you just don't have any money yeah. so you're going out of business Giving it all away. so there has to be some balance you have to find the right balance that's what every company is trying to do now I would say that you would you where you want to lean and this is probably what you're thinking you want to lean toward taking care of the customer. You wanna lean toward giving the contractors good value for their work. You wanna lean toward high quality. The reason you wanna lean towards those things is those are all long-term strategic payoffs, Mm -hmm. right? What's the short term? The short term is take advantage of the customers. The short term is screw over the contractors. The short term is put out low quality stuff. We make good profit this quarter. Yeah, yeah. But it's a sh- it's a short term win. It's a long time long term loss. So that's why I would say lean. Don't go out of control. You can't go out of control in that direction. But you can lean towards that direction. Now, as far as the new company, the merger and all this stuff, get it? I get it. Here's what's going to happen. You need to go and build good relationships with those people. The new company. They need to be your best friends, because if you build relationships with them, then you can have influence over these points. If you have an antagonistic relationship and you're the go- new guy or whatever, like, oh yeah, the new company, you you think they don't, you, you're saying that they, what does he say, they don't know what we do, right? What do you think they think? They think you don't know what they do. Mm-hmm. They're thinking, you know what, you don't even, hey, you guys make good, might, might make good product, but you can't sell anything. And we got sales and we got marketing. We could sell anything. Mm-hmm. We don't care what it looks like. We don't care what the quality is. That's what they're thinking. Yeah. So you need to form a relationship with them because I will tell you, with their sales and marketing, if you're making a good product, that's how we get the big time win. But if you have an antagonistic relationship with them, uh, it'll all fall apart and you won't have any influence at all. And they'll be like, you don't even know what you're talking about, dude. We're just gonna jack the price even more and we're gonna undercut our contractors. We're gonna get contractors competing with each other. They're gonna hate each other. They're gonna hate us, but it doesn't matter. Look Mm -hmm. at our bottom line. Mm -hmm. So build some relationships there. Next question. I'm conflicted about where my loyalty lies. I have a wife and two children, but I recently took a job within federal law enforcement and based on my prior tactical experience, I'll be given the opportunity to attend a two week selection for a position as an operator on a full time tactical team that will most certainly pull me away from my family. My heart is in the right place. I know this level of sacrifice is needed in order to keep evil at bay. However, I believe every father feels that obligation to be at home, to raise the children. And I'm learning that balancing duty, responsibility, loyalty, commitment to family, to country is hard and maybe impossible. All right. So... Oh, and he goes on to say that I know you have made this decision yourself. Yeah, and I would say to this dude, um, actually, you are the only person that can make this decision. And you're right, I did make that decision. I did 20 years, and I, at the end of 20 years, decided to prioritize my family over the military and over my own desires, too. Because mm. believe me, the selfish thing is just keep getting after it. <laughs> but also, what's important I was not good at balancing, right? I've, I ranked and prioritized the teams above my family the whole time I was in. And not everyone does that. Some people are much better at balancing than I did, and that's how they do 30 and 32 years and 34 years and 27 years. They, they figure out how to balance that better than I did. And so 
it sounds like you're even raising this question indicates to me that you probably have a decent chance of being able to be better at balancing than I do. So there's that. The other thing I would say is you say that the being an operator on a full-time tactical team will most certainly pull me away from my family. I, I would research that a little bit, you know, because sometimes when you get to a little higher level, you have more flexibility and you might, you might actually have time to spend with your family might be a little bit different. Maybe you're on call, whereas normally you wouldn't be on call, but now all of a sudden you're on call, but you're, while you're on call, you're at least, you know, you're, you might be doing, you might have more family time. I don't know. I can tell you that, you know, sometimes depending on the way you look at it, you know, if you look at the special operations community versus the conventional community, and it just depends on the units, depends on a lot of things, but sometimes, you know, the conventional forces go on a, you know, 16 month deployment to Iraq. And that's a long time. Some special operations units going on four month deployments and they come home. Now they, now they might do more of those over their career. But again, that's something you need to, you need to find out the facts. You need to talk to someone that's on that team and say, Hey, listen, here's what's going on. I got two sons. They wrestle and they do jujitsu. And I'd like to go to those tournaments. What's our schedule? Like, how is it going to be, you know? And then you kind of, you, you can make a better assessment. I wouldn't just assume that the tactical team has a busier schedule. I could be wrong. I could be completely wrong. What, what you're probably, the assumption you're making, which is a decent assumption, is that when you're part of, a, part of an elite tactical team, you're gonna have to input more time. It's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna mean more to you and you're gonna be like, okay, I need to train more. I'm gonna tell you, you should train more no matter what position you're in. Right, you need to be training as much as you can. You need to be staying sharp. So I would do some research on that, and then I would also consider this: men have been leaving their families so that they could go and fight evil since the beginning of time. Whether it was they were going out to fight the lions, or whether they were going out to fight some, or going to invade other countries, or going to find treasure, or whatever. Whatever they were doing, people have been doing it. Even World War II, guys left, and there was no guarantee that they were coming home. They left for two, three, four years. Those, that's the way it works. There's, your your boys are not going to be, they're not, their lives aren't going to be ruined if you're not there at every ball game. And, and I'll tell you, there's actually, if you do that, your sons will learn the meaning of duty and sacrifice more than a normal kid would. So so pay attention to that too. Again, all that being said, this is something that only you can make the call on because you're you can analyze the details of the situation. And you know, what if your wife works or what your wife works or that wife doesn't work? That makes a big deal. If your wife works and you're gone all the time, that's a problem. Now who's raising your kids? So you gotta pay attention to that. If you if you both work but you both work normal jobs now you're home and you're doing you're you know you're there enough, so just weigh these things out. But I would I would get the details and then make a decision. And you know what? No matter what decision you make, it's the right decision. How's that? That's pretty simple. You're if you make a decision and you're going to go on the tactical team, cool. If you don't, cool. You're still doing federal law enforcement. Awesome. Keeping the keeping the monsters at bay. Mm. Yeah, the thing that helped me a lot that you explained early on is to tell them why you're tell people why you're doing what you're doing. Mm-hmm. You know, the team, and in this case, the family or whatever. And in this specific case, probably your wife. Yeah. So if you're feeling that, because I dig it, I dig it, the the feeling of like, oh, I I feel like I'm not being as loyal to my family because I'm like focusing on work, yeah. kind of thing. So I'll get that from time to time, you know, especially if I'm like super focused and it's like, dang, I didn't think about my kids or family all day today, mm-hmm. you know, I'll have that little thing, whatever. I dig yeah. it. And <laughs> I used to go like four months without <laughs> thinking about my family. I'm such a <laughs> yeah, horrible. You know. Well, it's a sliding scale, so you know, um, but I do know that the more I communicate with my wife and be like, hey, I, I have to go here. Yeah. And I'm, this is what I'm going to, I'm going to really try to focus on this, you know, this week, you know, I'm so hey, can make you. make a video this week. <laughs> sure. I'm, and you I'm know, I'm really I might, busy. Uh, yeah, I'll be busy. So I might not be here for this and this, and you know, like I might miss this, you know, and just lay it all out and yeah. why you're doing it. Uh, you know, how you always say, and 
a lot of the times your loyalty will be demonstrating demonstrated with that you yep. know like it's like hey i'm doing my my job it's the time requirements are a little bit more or whatever like i want you to know like what can i can we do anything can we adjust anything to make it better for everybody yeah, or whatever you're 100 percent right and and actually to take that one step further including your wife into the decision making process where you're like hey listen hon yeah. this if i do this job it's going to be more but hey it's going to be super rewarding to me and sometimes that's enough. You know, you tell your wife, this is gonna be super rewarding for me because I'm gonna be able to go and kill bad guys, which is, or protect innocent people, which is what I wanna do. That's what I signed up for, and I'm gonna be able to do it in a, in a more complete way. Yeah. And there's a chance your wife says, you know what? I know that's what you're born to do, go do it. Or she might say, listen, you've done that already. You know, let's focus on the family, and you be you're cool. Yeah. Those are both good decisions. Yeah. We're in a win-win situation here. Yeah. That's the bottom line, dude. Yeah. Next question. Jocko, I'm 19 and my f in my first year of college. Ever since I was 12, I've dreamed about being a Marine or SEAL. I plan on joining up after college, but I just got diagnosed with epilepsy. I only have seizures in my sleep, so I never notice them. I always thought of serving in the military as a way that I would prove to myself that I was a man and that it would be, it'd give my life a purpose. Now, I don't know what to do. I hate the idea of living some comfortable life where I have a cozy nine to five job that I only do for the money. I want something hard and meaningful. What should I do? There's an infinite number of options that you have. So you need to just pick one of those options, find a new career of that you think looks cool and then go get after it. And you gotta figure you wanna you don't want a nine to five job? Cool. There's all kinds of jobs that aren't nine to five. You know, whether it's Construction management or construction or gas oil or some kind of public safety. There's all kinds of things I don't know if you can be a firefighter. I don't know if you can be a cop if you have epilepsy I'm not sure but there's all kinds of different jobs and careers and th There's jobs that are hard and There's jobs that are incredibly meaningful to our economy here and the more you help our economy here the more you help us have a positive influence in the world. So go and figure out what job you want to do and go crush it and go, you know, build an empire and make a ton of money. And then if you want to, great, then you can support some veterans causes and you can give back that way. So, so that's cool. There's, there's, it's always impressive to me. We work with all kinds of different companies at Echelon Front. It's always so impressive to me when I meet people from every possible industry that you can imagine, and they're completely into their job. They are so into their job, they're fighting World War IX. Like, they're that <laughs> into it. Sure. You know, they're running intel, they're running operations, they're, they're driving down, every dollar matters, everything that they're doing, they're so into it, and it's awesome. Mm. And, and this is everything. This is every different industry I see people like that. Now, not every person in every industry is like that. But if you find something that you're interested in and you jump in there, and that's going to be your vocation, right? Now, there's another part to this that is kind of, uh, I guess, like in your head or whatever. And that's like some kind of hard living. That's not, that's not very difficult to come up with, right? Go start training jujitsu. Go start training some boxing. Go start wrestling. Go do Muay Thai. Go start shooting. Go start lifting and seeing how strong you can get and seeing how powerful you can get. Go learn to hunt and learn to hike and learn to play guitar and learn just learn a bunch of stuff. Become a force to be reckoned with. And you know, the bottom line is being a SEAL or being a Marine does not prove that you are a man. There are plenty of losers in both of those organizations. And so don't you don't need some label to make you a man. That's not what makes you a man. Be your own man. Go out and conquer your part of the world. Next question. Two questions. I recently attended an assessment for retraining. Let's say one more thing. Mm. Sorry. No, man. First. When things like this happen, like when something happens to me, what this is you want to hear my weird, superstitious um, view of the world? Sure. 
It's sort of it's sort of reminiscent of everything happens for a reason. Mm. You've heard that, everyone's heard that. For me, something like this, when something like this happens to me, when something happens in my life that mm. I didn't want to have happen or I didn't expect to happen, I get an unpleasant surprise. I look at it and assess it like, okay, this is this is happening so that something else, this is trying to prevent something else from happening to me that I would have been really catastrophic. I hurt my knee the other day doing jujitsu, sure. doing doing wrestling. And I in, on, my, on my way driving home, I'm like, you know what? This is preventing me from wrecking my shoulder in two weeks. Or the next night, I was probably gonna wreck my shoulder, which is, which is you know, a catastrophic injury on my shoulder. Mm. That's what was about to happen to me. Mm. And the powers that be yeah. knew the only way to get me off the mat yeah, yeah. was to hurt my knee bad enough that it pulled me off the mat for for a couple weeks. Yeah. So boom, there you go. Here you go, Jocko. You're welcome. Yeah. So something like this, this is an indicator, as far as I'm concerned, you have some bigger and better thing that you need to do. Yeah. Some Hey, it wasn't this. Yeah. That's cool. Accept it like right on. Say thank you. Yeah. Because there's people that they, they, it's not epilepsy that they have. They have something that debilitates them from doing even things that you are capable of doing. So be stoked that this delivery came from wherever it comes from, whatever it is that you believe in, mm -hmm. that this, 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 got, this happened because it's, it's putting you on the path. I guess that's what I'm saying. Yeah. It's putting you on the path. So who knows what you're supposed to do? But you're supposed to do something because yeah. you're not supposed to be a SEAL. Yeah. You're not supposed to be a Marine. If you were supposed to be, that, that would have happened. It didn't happen. That's not a bad thing. That means there's some other door that's going to open up big. Yeah. So that's the way I look. I, I always look at injuries like that. Yeah, I that's always, that's the most positive way I can look at injuries is, hey, I was going to whatever. I was going to yeah. like I was going to rip apart triple threat on my knee. Yeah. in four days, mm -hmm. so I just got a little ding to pull me off the mat so that doesn't happen. Yeah. Oh, I needed rest. Here's what you get. Boom. Yeah. You're gonna get this. Yeah, I'll have those thoughts too sometimes. Yeah. Like, it's kind of like, oh, I'm safe from injury because I'm already injured kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. It's like there that you weird, go. It's a weird feeling. Yeah, but that is true. And, yeah, and kind of like a lot of times too, and this is so good that th that guy, this guy, mm -hmm. Is he knows already? I want to do something hard and meaningful, yeah, yeah, yeah. bro. I man, I, how did he say how old he was? Nineteen. Nineteen. Man, nineteen. I didn't have. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like he's, not, he's already quarter, on the path. Bro, he's totally on the path, and you know he's just discovering what doors he wants to. You know what doors are open, what doors are closed, whatever. You know, and he's discovered. Man, when I was nineteen. Nah, I didn't have no direction. Did I, did I ever have the thought of, hey, yeah, I want to do something hard and meaningful? Did I ever have that thought? Hmm. No, I did not have that thought ever. Um, maybe Check. lifting weights or something like this. But, yeah, man, that's good. So, I, yeah, I think he's ahead of the game. Yeah, Big man. Big time. Yeah. There's no, there's no label that makes you a man. You do. Yeah. Check. And you're doing a good job so far, evidently. All right, next question, two questions. I recently attended assessment for retraining into the combat control career field. I'm active duty for Air Force in a different career field. And rang the bell during water confidence training. How do I live with my decision and move forward? Yeah, That's and the then you see there's two, there's two questions that are basically the same question. So that was part A and this is part B. I do read D O R D D O R D. Okay. Drop on request. Gotcha. Ring the bell. Same thing. Right? Mm -hmm. So I, I D O R D from Buds Class Three O Three. I went went on to be a S A R course corpsman. Sar swimmer. Sar swimmer corpsman. So he was okay. a he was a rescue swimmer. Okay, but it's ta but it's taken until recently to regain the desire to live, and even strive to work out again. What can you do? when you realize a life path you have chosen was not only wrong, but you never feel like you found a new path? So, to me, this, this question, both these questions are kind of similar to the previous one, right? And like I can tell you, being a, being a SEAL or being a combat controller is not the be all end all. And the bottom line is it wasn't for you. It wasn't for you, it wasn't either, either one of you guys, it just wasn't for you. And it, the, the, the fact of the matter is it's not for most people, it's not normal. There's an 80% attrition rate of buds. 
Most people quit. Good people. I was down there the other day, and I was talking to one of my buddies that runs runs it. Runs the. He's he's a civilian, but he's one of the civilians that works there. But he was. We were talking about, you know, what it about buds, and I forget what even led into it. But he pointed at the. You know, when you when you quit buds, you put your helmet by the bell, mm. and so as more and more people quit, more and more helmets are lined up, and there'll be hundreds of helmets lined up, mm. and. He's like, you see those helmets right there? And I'm like, yeah. He goes, every single one of those kids was a stud. And when I went through, it wasn't quite like that. Mm -hmm. Because not everyone that was showing up at Bud's in the 90s was a stud. They weren't. Because we didn't know what was happening. We didn't know know how to do a pull-up workout. We couldn't look online and see... A program on how to get better at rope climbs. Mm-hmm. We didn't know that you had to swim with fins. We didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't know anything when I showed up to Buds. Mm-hmm. So these kids now they know everything, and so what do they do? They prepare all of them at a minimum. I would say the minimum guy prepared now is probably prepared at least as good as the most prepared guy. Actually, that's probably that's probably inaccurate. I bet you the minimum, the, the least prepared guy entering buds right now, is probably still more prepared than the most prepared guy that went to buds when I went through. Huh. Now, so so my point in saying that is most of those people that are studs quit. Most of those people that join the navy, that sign on a dotted line and commit six years of their life because there's nothing more they want to do than be a seal. And most of them don't make it through. Mm -hmm. So it's not for everyone. And then, you know what? You, you, one guy in the Air Force, one guy in the Navy, you did your job, you did what you're supposed to do, corpsman, whatever your normal career field was in the Air Force, and you served your country. And you did what the country needed you to do. The country needs you to do whatever job you did, the country needed you to do that job. So thank you for your service. And now you go and find something else. You go and find a new mission. And the same things here, like you, you, you want to get better with your life. So what do you do? You work and you build and you study and you get in an awesome physical condition and you train jujitsu and you become a doctor or a firefighter or EMT or a cop and there's whichever way that you figure out that you can serve, you become a business person, you go and work construction, whatever it is that you do, you go and do it. You do it hard and you don't get caught up in a title, right? So... Uh, this is another thing. This kind of reflects back to what we were talking about earlier. Seals don't care that you weren't a seal. <laughs> you know? Mm-hmm. Like, it's not like seals are walking around going, oh, this person wasn't a seal. I don't respect them. This person wasn't a seal. I don't respect them. We don't care. Mm-hmm. It's a vocation. It's a job. So you're not, I don't look down on people that weren't seals. It's just, that was my job. You had a different job, mm-hmm. Right. It's it's like it's like jujitsu. I don't look down on people that don't train jujitsu. I look at them like, hey, you should, because that's a choice. Mm. But let me rephrase that. I don't look down on people that I can beat in jujitsu, because I know for a fact all it is is that I've been training longer than them, mm-hmm. and once they train longer than me, they'll be able to beat me. That's the way it works. So people that were in the SEAL teams aren't looking down on you because you weren't. They don't care. They're not thinking about it. So when I meet a cop, when I meet a firefighter, when I meet a business person, I respect what they're doing with their life. If they're getting after it, I don't care what arena it's in. Man, I know some, I, I'm so lucky right now working at Echelon Front, we meet people that are just, just awesome humans that are crushing their field. And if they were in the SEAL teams, they'd be crushing that field, but they didn't. They went, to, they went and did what they did. They went in the finance world. They went in the construction world. They went in the gas oil business. Whatever they did, they did, and they're getting after it. So that's what you need to do. You quit in the past. You rang the bell. No one cares unless you quit now. So get up. Go find a new mission and get after it, man. Get after it. Next question. You've been unfairly wronged by a brother, Mm. objectively. Mm. You aren't getting the full apology that you expected. The beef is over now. 
and he treats you well. But how do you psychologically reframe and kill that lingering resentment? Unfairly wronged by a brother. Interesting. Brothers don't wrong brothers. We'll start with that. So this dude wasn't actually a bro, a brother. He might have been a bro, but he wasn't a brother. Yeah. Make a little distinction there. Mm-hmm. Has that distinction ever been made before? I don't think on this p- uh, platform. Okay. No, maybe. Well, I'm making it. Cool. There's like, hey, this guy's my bro. It's all good. And then there's like, this guy's my brother. Yeah. My brother is not going to wrong me. My bro might. <laughs> but my brother's not going to wrong me. Damn. So... That, so if it happens, some guy, like I said, if somebody that you consider your brother wrongs you, then they clearly you you overestimated their Relationships commitment. <laughs> so here's what's going to happen with me. Number one, it's noted. Noted. That's my that's my ultimate. That's my ultimate satisfaction. <laughs> right uh, when I note when it's when I note something. Yeah. Oh, it's like, oh, this is the kind of, kind of person he is. Noted. Right. Now I got him. Yeah. Now I got this person marked. So trust is not going to be reestablished for a long, long time, if ever. Mm-hmm. Right? I'm not going to like this person, clearly. But here's the deal. All that mistrust and all that dislike and all that is going to be internal. I'm gonna keep it inside, because <laughs> you know what? I'm gonna have those inside. I'm gonna harbor that. I'm gonna harbor those things. Even this resentment, I'm gonna harbor it because I can't. I can't just make it go away. You, you, you wronged me. It's gonna be there. Yeah. But you know what? I'm a professional. Externally, I'm a professional. Even if we're not in a business, I mean, even if it's just like, hey, I, I, I trained jujitsu with this guy, right? right. I'm a professional. So I'm not going to let his little maneuvers get me externally worked up yeah. about it. It's not happening. You don't get to control my emotions like that externally. You might control them inside, yeah. but I won't let you see that ever. So I'm a professional. I'm normal face. That's where I'm coming at you from. Just normal face. Hey, all good. Oh, yeah. And you know what's interesting? This behavior. So when you screw me over and then I just go, okay, check, noted. And then I don't give you a reason to like hate me. And then you kind of owe me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yes, you kind of owe me. Yeah. So there's that. And there's a there's a fine line. Like if you screw me over and then I just allow it to happen and it was a it was a uh, a vi- legitimate violation, well then there might be, have to be repercussions, right? Yeah. It sounds like this did not warrant repercussions. Mm-hmm. Cuz you know, there's certain situations if somebody wrongs you in certain ways, there has to be repercussions. Mm. To me, normally, most of the time, the repercussions and the best revenge that you can take is is to ignore and outperform and be successful and rock on and forget about them and forget they even existed. That, to me, is the best possible way to go. Because mm. why would you let somebody interfere? Why would you commit any time, effort, resources to revenge when I would, the better thing to do is commit those time, resources, energy to success, to winning. Yeah, I'm going to do that. But if this merits some sort of repercussions, okay, then those get carried out. And if those get carried out, well, then we're 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 kind of settled. But he says you didn't get the full apology you expected. It's like okay, I mean, yeah. hey, guess what? People are arrogant. Yeah, that's the way it is. They don't think the guy didn't even think he did anything wrong. Most likely. He's not even apologizing for it, barely. Yeah. So that's what I do. I'm just going to keep it professional. I'm gonna. You're going to be subconsciously indebted to me, whether you know it or not. Yeah. You probably know it. You'll probably feel it. Because yeah. I'm just going to be like, okay, cool. Yeah. We'll move on. Yeah. So, but, I, man, you know, the thing is, this is, sort of goes back to that other kind of topic today. Like, this guy isn't going around thinking about you. Yeah. So why are you thinking about him? Let's move on, man. Let's move yeah. forward. Yeah, that seems like a big part of it, right? <laughs> like that seems like he was. You, he says you aren't you aren't getting the full apology. You know, like remember on that Seinfeld that apology. Dude, one? I was talking to someone. I was talking to someone like like the apology. I was talking to someone that we both know, who's, we'll say, a a public figure. Sure. And this individual was reading YouTube comments. 
and getting legitimately like emotionally distraught about oh, the like whole thing. About it, yeah. yeah. And was was t- trying to talk to me about it and like I, I said, "Man, I literally do not care." <laughs> I'm like, "I do not care. Yeah. Like this is no factor. You don't need to warn me. You don't need to tell me uh, you know what I need to look out for like I literally don't care. Yeah, yeah. I mean if someone writes a good YouTube comment Good. It's funny. That's great. Mm-hmm. If they write a, a mean one cool I, f- I think those are funny, too. Yeah, I'm not I'm not worried about it The person that wrote the YouTube comment isn't thinking about me. Yeah, <laughs> you know, they're yeah. not trying They're not they're not reviewing it again yeah, yeah, and yeah. writing it again mm-hmm. and, and you know like they don't care yeah. I'm not getting all caught up in this stuff. Don't get caught up in these petty things. You know, I did that we talked about this on the podcast of 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 the black belt. The black belt doesn't care about things that don't matter. You can grab the the black belt's shoulder of his gi, and he doesn't care because he knows that doesn't mean anything. There's no there's no that's no factor. Mm-hmm. So you want to that's that's what you want to do. You want to you don't want to care about things that don't matter. Yeah. Don't invest your time and energy in things that don't matter. The guy wronged you. Cool. Noted. You know that he's kind of. A, Kind of a, a a devious dude, you know that it's noted. Cool, move on. Yeah. No, I'm not worried about it. Am I gonna put my trust in him again? Nope. But that's cool because I know other people to trust. Yeah. Let's not get wrapped around these little things, man. Let's 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 rise above. We get some black flag going here. Let's rise above. I still wonder what kind of apology. I it totally was, cut though. you off. So sorry about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. No, it was a Seinfeld thing. It didn't matter. The but I'm wondering what. At the same time, what you're saying, uh, I agree. But. Mm-hmm. I do wonder what kind of apology he got, you know, because he didn't get the full apology. Yeah, partial. Yeah. So, well, partial apology, that can come in many forms. Yeah, it's so, probably the most common form of a partial apology has a butt on it. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, it was, 100%. Hey, you know, I'm sorry. You know, I'm sorry we didn't swing by and pick the other up the other night, but yeah. I just didn't even know that you wanted to come. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> kind of like you, it, it was my fault. I'm sorry, but yeah, it was yeah. partially your fault, yeah, too, yeah, kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah. And then there's the other one that's like, I'm sorry you felt that way. You know, you know that one? Yeah. Where it's like, hey, I'm sorry you felt that, that I was attacking you, you mm-hmm. know? But, you know, I didn't mean to kind of thing where it's kind of like, hey, you're because the person doesn't want an apology for necessarily the actual words you said. It was it was like what you did, Mm -hmm. like you attacked me with whatever you said, you know, kind of thing. So you can't just say, hey, I can't. I'm sorry. (laughs) You felt that way. I'm sorry that you felt that way. Yeah. You know, that is a pretty backhanded sort of. Yeah, same thing, but the Dishonest. with the but. Well, the the when you say but, I, I'm sorry, but you know, I didn't know. That's kind of like I'm sorry, but I'm not fully like. Yeah, that's the same. Sorry. With, that's the same with extreme ownership. Yes. that's when people yeah, say, same thing. you know, look, I'm in charge of the team, and this was definitely I'm in charge of the team. When I'm in charge, then then when things go wrong, it's my fault. But I'll tell you what. <laughs> As soon as I hear that, I'm always thinking to myself. Yeah, you're not sorry, man. You're yeah. not sorry. Yeah, and my wife from time to time will there watch There are these. no excuses. Yeah, there's no... If b- you think about it, when you get somebody that actually believes in extreme ownership, there is there are yeah. no buts on anything yeah. that they say. And strangely, I mean, kind of, I guess, coincident, not coincident, ironically, My nine-year-old daughter will not allow you to make an excuse. Yes, my I nine-year-old that. daughter. Yeah. She will call you out if you throw a butt yeah. or you say, well... I didn't know when we had to be there. Oh, so you're not taking ownership of yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, she takes her own thing too much. It makes, yeah, totally makes sense. And if you, it's strangely like if you do it without the butt, you know when you do it just full speed, even if in your head you believe butt, you know, I mean, let's face it, keep man, it you yourself, had it coming keep, to you kind of thing. Just, yeah, just keep it, because that's not what you're doing when you apologize. Mm-hmm. That's that's separate from the apology, you know? Yeah. It's like you're including this stuff, unwarranted stuff with your apology. Don't do that. Give a good apology the and make it work. The worst thing is, the worst thing is, is it's so obvious and it makes everyone so mad. Oh, yeah. The receiving end of that is so mad. Bro. And you think that it's you think that it's improving your position, yeah? Because yeah. you're expi- look, I w- look, hey, Echo, I'm really sorry that you showed up to record and, and I wasn't there and I didn't let you know, but but I didn't really I didn't remember texting you or whatever, like yeah. like. But you know, you should have told me that you were heading. That's that's what I would have. Yeah. But you should have told me that we were definitely recording because you didn't really get back to me. Yeah. Like, why would I say that? Yeah. All I'm doing is, you know, what's funny is people always tweet me when a sports coach. They tweet me when a sports coach either takes ownership 
or doesn't overtly yeah. does not overtly yeah. does because some guys some sports coaches say hey look i'm the coach i made some bad calls out there we're gonna get back in the drawing room i'm gonna get this thing fixed and everyone goes man this guy's awesome and it's just so funny everyone says this guy is awesome he's taking ownership yeah even people that aren't even people will retweet something that they people aren't saying He's taking extreme ownership. Someone will say, oh, it's good to see a coach taking full responsibility or whatever. They'll, right. they'll use their own word for it. Right. And then some other knucklehead sure. Left. Will, will say, you know, I'm, I am the coach and I am responsible for the team. But if I got players that aren't going to put out right. during the first quarter, you know, yeah. Yeah. Like, I'm not the one on the field. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. you, you, you got to carry out. This totally yeah. embarrassing. For, and everyone says, hey, you might want to learn how to take ownership. Yeah. And that's what people, so it's so obvious. Mm. And yet we still do it. Amen. We still throw out the butts. We still want to clarify our position. Yeah. Perhaps. Don't clarify your position. But Say my, sorry. Take my, ownership. That's my, it. My wife will watch these, uh, what do you call it? The Housewives one. Not the show, like the reality <laughs> show ones. You know, the, yeah. the whatever Housewives of wherever. Okay, yeah. And man, riddled. I think that's why she watches it, just to see the train wreck, I think. That's what I think is my mm. suspicion. But man, yeah, they, they're all arguing with each other. And then, you know, they're crying. And then the one will say they, they'll just they'll say the perfect example of the non-apology you know every single time yeah man it's like it hurts your heart to watch but you kind of <laughs> like you kind of dig it <laughs> i want i wonder if this because this is what happened with this guy i just i just figured it out right now i really don't know but this is what i think happened with oh, okay this guy. we have okay. a theoretical yeah there was a, re- there was a girl guy relationship there was a what a girl guy relationship okay you know boyfriend girlfriend scenario you know maybe this guy got drunk the bro the brother bro whatever got drunk yeah. maybe hit on the girl maybe something happened maybe something did it oh and then it was like hey man happened. sorry about what i did with christine last night i was super hammered though. yes but i was super <laughs> hammered yeah exactly right and that's a big one that's yeah. a big but in the apology you know yeah. but oh you know we all had man, i remember some one time someone did i won't go into it doesn't matter but it's a big one Yay. it's a big deal or it's a big common one you where got it's wronged like, by a brother Bro, no, it was my like parents' friend. Okay, this lady, and she like she was talking, she was talking shit about my mom to my dad, uh-huh. and I was there. They're hammered or whatever, yeah. like some you know thing, and she's like totally talking shit. I like you weren't in gonna front talk about this, but I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. <laughs> so I'm like whatever. I'm like a teen. I'm maybe 15, 16 years old. Uh-huh. Maybe maybe thirteen. I don't know. Whatever. But you know, a, a, a teenager. I wasn't like a three year old. Mm-hmm. You know. So I heard and I knew what she was talking about. It was it was rude. It was uncool. It was unsat, mm-hmm. as we say. And so I'm like, cool. I go home and I, t- I tell my mom straight up. So my mom's like, oh, well, okay. You know, tells my dad, blah, blah, blah. My dad tells the lady. And the lady, of course, is all like, oh, oh no. You know, like I d- did this. And, you know, so she comes to me and she says, sorry. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, sorry for this. or But we had, a, you know, we had a lot to drink or whatever and all this stuff. And I remember feeling that like, how is this, like, how does this make it better? You mm-hmm. know, when you're like, but we had a, so I'm thinking that, and I didn't know anything about drinking. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't know what it made you sort of do. I didn't really know at that time. So to me, it was like, wait, so wait, when you drink, like you can do that kind of stuff or what? Like, what's the, the deal? Mm-hmm. And the, the apology just basically bounced off me like bullets off a of Superman or something. Yeah. No apology. Don't put the butts on those things. Yes. So that's what happened with this guy. That's what I think. It's possible. But it is his responsibility, like you said, to be like, hey, I can't hold on to this thing. You know? Like, what do you say? How do you psychologically reframe it and kill that lingering resentment? Thing is, it's like a scar. You have to, he's like keeping it a wound. Yeah, he's he's picking at it. Yeah. And you got to be like, that's just a scar. It's like, sure, our relationship is different now. It's a scar now. Deal with it. But, man, I got more important things to do think about or do whatever yeah if you can pull that that off you'd be good move on next question hello and thank you sir i'm an inner city math teacher an og hardcore kid i successfully approach my students as a team that i am the leader of how do i discipline some of my key players and at the same time boost or at least not lower morale awesome well that's cool I would say this, if you got kids in the classroom and you got key players in the classroom, do what I always say to do to people. Put them in charge of stuff, man. Mm -hmm. Put them in charge. Put these kids in charge of things in the class. Not just dumb stuff either. Not just clean up. 
not just sweeping the floor, but some legitimate stuff. Like, hey, I want you to come up with a lesson plan for tomorrow. Here's the book that we're looking at. Here's the pages I want you to talk about. Dang. I want you to lead the discussion that we're going to have in class. Hey, I want you to go over how you solve this math problems tomorrow. You got, you got some of the problems wrong on the test. I want to teach them to you, and I want you to teach the class. Because obviously I didn't do a good job. Maybe you can do a better job than me. And you know what? You, you, you're kind of you're kind of loud. Let's put that to use. I know people listen to you. Here's another thing, kid. The kids look, look at you and they look up to you. Let's use that. Let's try and get kids moving in the right direction. So that's what I would do in a situation like this. If someone's actually getting in trouble, I wouldn't, you don't do this, you don't do what I'm talking about because they're in trouble, right? That's a little bit, you can't say you're in trouble so you're gonna have to teach class tomorrow. Yeah. No, 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 that doesn't work. Yeah. You say, you say, hey, you let that, whatever they got punished for, you use you know, your punishment. That could be something like taking out trash. Yeah. But you don't wanna throw leadership at someone when they get in trouble. Occasionally you can do it. Occasionally you can be like, okay, you know what? You're in charge of the platoon for this week or for these four days of admin. And all of a sudden, yeah, you realize, oh, you gotta come in at five o'clock in the morning. Oh, you gotta stay until 1800 at night. Oh, you got these reports due. Oh, yeah, it's like all these things that you didn't think about, Mm. that's what you gotta do. Mm. And when you get off that restriction, when you get out of that role, you realize, hey, I have a little respect for the boss because I realize what the boss is going through. Mm. So that's what I would do, have some fun with this. Put the kids in charge of stuff, give them little assignments, make them get up, make them, turn them into leaders. Turn them into leaders. Check. What do you think? One more? One more. What do you do when you fail and how do you handle it? What do you do when you fail? You know, recently we reviewed that U.S. Army field manual on here from like World War II era. And it says in that manual, it says, other than death, all failure is psychological. Other than death, all failure is psychological. Think about that. Just, just, just think about that. This failure, this upset, this, this catastrophe if you aren't dead, then it's just psychological. It's in your head. Now, this does not mean that you won't lose some battles because you will. We all will. But it does mean that as long as you don't surrender, as long as you don't give up, as long as you don't quit, then you haven't failed. Just means you've made a, a temporary tactical retreat, it means you've made a, a brief withdraw so that you can regroup and reattack. So, as far as I'm concerned, if you get beat, unless you're dead, you are not defeated and you have not failed. What you've done is you've learned. You've you've gained experience. And you're still alive. And you have memories to make. So get up and go get after it. And I think that's all I've got for tonight. So, Echo Charles. Yes. Speaking of getting after it. Sure. Getting after it. Can you help us in that category? Yes. So, we are on the path. Part of that, part of that path, like we always say, is jujitsu. It's funny how, like, you'll say, ju- like, when you suggest someone to, to, or your suggestion for someone to, like, move on or to, like, you know, get out of a rut or whatever. You always say jujitsu. Yes. And rightly so. Yes. It'll, 
it's one of those things, man, where I I I am not a psychologist. I know you know that, <laughs> but I think that it'll cure various levels of depression. <laughs> For real. Hey, I've taken a lot of flack over that. Yeah. I've taken a lot of flack over that. I think Joe Rogan. Sure. When I was on his, you know, we were basically saying like work out, you know, feel yeah. better. And everyone got all mad. <laughs> right. But the funny thing is Tim Ferriss, who has actually gone through that kind of depression, will tell you the exact same thing. Yeah. So, yeah. Work out. Work out and do jiu-jitsu. Do jiu-jitsu. For sure. Yeah, it's crazy with, you know why I, I'd say jujitsu even more than just like a regular workout, whatever that even means, but uh-huh. um, is because you have a challenge that's a little bit more obviously like you against like an obvious challenge, you know, and True. you against the person. There's True. that. Okay, and then there's the physical part of it, of course, like the workout part yeah. of it, which is one of the best workouts. Like if I wanted to like lose 30 pounds, Right for I don't know whatever if Mm -hmm. I want to lose thirty pounds, like bad pounds, right? So I you know, and right now as of right now, there's no way I would do like a a, a weight loss workout. Yeah, yeah. I would just do regular weightlifting and I would just do more jujitsu. Yeah, that's it, hundred percent. Like why would you? So I'm screwed. Yeah, I mean jujitsu is such a good workout. Yeah, why would you work out muscles that you didn't know you had? Your whole body too. Yeah, by the way, whole body. Yeah, even your jaw muscles. Yeah, yeah. True story. Yeah. Oh yeah. Everything. Especially you with the jaw muscles because you're spending a lot of time on the court of the bat talking. <laughs> <laughs> Strain or coincidentally, that's another part of it is what I was about to say. Social so, aspect. 100%. For you. For everybody. No, I know. I'm kidding. Yeah, for yeah, you too. And Have a little conversation. Oh, yeah. Post training. Yeah. Even like between rounds, whatever. It's like you're doing it. And sure, you can do that at the gym kind of, but it's different. You know man. what? It's way different. People want to talk before training. Mm-hmm. I protest that. You know how I protest it? Uh, I start the start. clock. Uh, start yeah, the yeah. clock. Fred. I just go beep. Okay, the five minute rounds are on. You guys start rolling, people. Yeah. There's enough of this chitty chatter. Here's how prevalent the social element is. Jeez, look in, at you. No, no, no. And you'll agree with it because it happens with you too. Uh-huh. So you ever like shake and kiss? Clock started. Beep. Clock started. You shake hands with the person and then you just sneak in one question to the person like That's socially. Stalling, not all the time, because yeah, like the time. you know, you remember like I'll do it with Greg. I'll do it with Andy you sometimes. Andy and I will joke about that. Oh, like we'll talk about our like, day. Like Andy and I will joke about yeah, yeah. Like beep, clock starts, and it's like, uh, how's work today, dude? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? But that happens. Because basically, what it means is neither one of us feels like training. Yeah, yeah. And so stalling. we'll just laugh and then we'll train, right? Know? Because we won't, we won't actually have a conversation right but see how you know that it's a thing it is a thing it's yes, a you thing are so much that you make jokes about yes, it yes it is a thing that's how social it is you yeah. know and man it's like, you it's can like oh, I just gotta time my belt and adjust my gi and put my knee pads back up and you know what I mean yeah yeah there's another stalling another, tactics yeah not very so. social but yeah it's stalling for sure um, but the, so there's a lot of benefits to this thing that we call jujitsu the jujitsu bois Anyway, that was a side note. Anyway, when you're doing jiu-jitsu, of course, you need a gi because you're doing gi and no gi. Mm. So when you get your gi, what gis are we getting? Are we getting the best gis or are we getting the junkest gis? We're getting the best gis. Correct. <laughs> oh, yeah, big time. Anyway, the best gis are origin gis. You get them at originmain.com. Originmain.com. Yep. All kinds of stuff. All kinds of clothes, including jeans. Yes, American denim. Which, you know what? Even, like, not everyone does jiu-jitsu. Not everyone does gi jiu-jitsu, but everyone does have jeans. Now let me ask you the same question you asked me. What kind of jeans are we getting? Best kind. Not the junkest. Not the junk. What did you say? Junkest? Junkest, yeah. That's not even a word. Yes, it is. <laughs> it is. Not the junkest kind. It we'll is. Go with ju- it. If something is junk. Oh, you know what? It's junkiest. That's another one of those subtle differences in, in, in remember how I told you in, in Hawaii, uh-huh. there are like subtle differences in words. Uh-huh. They're only yeah, small. Yeah, yeah. They're pretty much yeah, the yeah. same, but they're subtle differences. That's one of them. That is one of them. Like junk is That's like, a little pigeon. Yeah. There's a little pigeon. Because like, it would be junkiest. Right. Not junkiest. Ju- exactly right. So junk is the same as junkie. Like it's this it's like in the main line you say junkie. Like it's junk, it's more of a what do you call it? Like a not a verb, but um uh, Oh yeah, adjective. like that 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 hamburger is real is real junky. Right. So junk on the mainland the word junk is a noun. It's a junk. It's a piece of junk. Mm-hmm. It's a pile of junk. It's a noun. Got it. In Hawaii it's a it's an adjective. Like it's junk. Like that's a way of describing it. Well, that that was a noun. No, 
See, it sounded like a noun to you because you're from the mainland. If you say junk, that's why you can have words like it's junker. <laughs> like way more junk. <laughs> way more junk. Like okay. we don't want the junk because there's such thing yeah. as junk, junker, and junkist in Hawaii. In here, it's like, no, it's a just junk. It's either junk or it's like not junk, you know, kind of thing. Because it's it. a noun. See what I'm saying? Got like it. I said, these differences are subtle. You gotta follow though. Yeah. I know, because I thought of like if you went, if I said, hey, what's that stuff on the side of your house over there, Echo? You'd be like, oh, that's just junk. Right, a pile of that's junk. junk. And yeah. I, Get what you mean by that? It's an old lawn chair. Right. It's an old weed whacker that doesn't work anymore. Sure, right? Yeah, There's a couple f- stuffed yeah. animals that no one wants anymore. Sure. That's junk. Yes. But what you're saying is, hey, how's that car that you just bought? Yeah. How's it work? How is it? Is that thing? Is it know, dope? Is it dope? And you're like, no, no, it's junk. It's junk. How was that movie last night? Kind of junk. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So, I'm with it. in regards to jeans, you don't want the junk jeans, no. or in your case, the junkier. Your junkiest jeans. Junkest is what you said. Correct. That's the whole, the yeah. kawaii version. Hawaii, yes. That's how. Um, nonetheless, <laughs> no, yes, get you the, want the best ones. Get the origin jeans and whatever other clothes. And don't forget about supplements too. Yeah. Supplements, joint warfare, krill oil, discipline. Discipline go. Dig it. Discipline go for when you need a little kick. And, and I, it's interesting, you and I have both morphed to a situation where discipline the drink mm-hmm. is just the normal, that's the just normal. part of the world. Part that's just it. part of it. Yeah, I am now drinking, and this is the thing about discipline. It doesn't have 480 grams of, or 480 milligrams of caffeine. Yeah. In fact, it has 15 grams per scoop. This is not the f- crazy stimulant. That's like, let's face it, jujitsu? Mm-hmm. You don't wanna be all amped up on caffeine going into jujitsu class Negative. at all. Negative, no. That's why discipline is so good, pre-roll. Yep. So that's what I've figured out now. Because if you have iced tea, which I used to drink a lot of iced tea, yeah. drink Jocko White tea, right? You you just drink that stuff, right? Yeah. Like think of when you were a kid, oh, and have some iced tea. That had caffeine in it, mm-hmm. right? You weren't freaking out. That has way more caffeine than discipline. So what I'm saying is discipline is now just sort of a, just a, just a day long, like an all day. I must have had, I must have had five bottles of discipline today. Dang. Okay, yeah. You, that's that's you just all day. Me. Because I'm sitting there drinking it, you know. Yeah. I'm I'm working. Yeah. I'm writing. I'm editing. Which you, which which. Ed, let's face right, it. Bro, let, let's face it. it. Like, it, writing and editing sometimes is a real chore, yeah. a mental chore. It's, it's not is. fun. Yeah. So you got to get in the game. Yeah. That's why I've been drinking a lot of been discipline lately because I've been dr- a lot of writing, a lot of mental thought. Yeah. So, yeah. anyways, you don't know the mega mix for jujitsu is. Discipline. Mm-hmm. Okay, water. Mm-hmm. You can actually add like a little, like a maybe like a third cup, whatever, the third of your mix total of like a cranberry juice, mm-hmm. or like um, you can squeeze lemon juice in there or something. Okay, water, lemon juice, discipline, mm-hmm. and on it has these like minerals and electrolyte mix. Mm. One scoop of that, boom, that's the jujitsu mega mix. There you go. Oh, Brad, it'll bring you through. Go to do. Two scoops of discipline, three if you want to get nuts. Mm-hmm. You got to add more water, you know, and then you yeah. got that situation going or whatever. There's been times where I've made discipline shots. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, like yeah. hey, Makes sense. okay, you know what? I, I'm heading to jujitsu. I'm, I'm going to be there in three minutes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm just yeah, going to mix yeah. up a little shot. It's got three scoops and it's, it's like a shot. Yeah. So I've done that before. But that's also why I made discipline go. Yeah. Because Discipline Glow is for those situations where you don't want to drink a bunch, but you just want that hitter. Yeah, but the go, the pill, that, that yeah. takes longer though, right? Because it's not instant. It's yeah. not like the instant That's why um, I take situation. that one like, I don't know, half an hour, 40 yeah. minutes prior to yeah. event situation, yeah, man, evolution. It, it's like, yeah, the evolution. It, mine, I feel like is, or it is straight up, it's like a routine. You know how like you, you sort of have a routine, I guess. Oh, yeah. You know, some, some people yeah, do. I got some routines. Yeah, and um, when protocol. you yeah the protocol comes in into play like this. You go boom. Okay, I got jujitsu at x x time, right? I leave the house at x time minus whatever. I drink the mega mix, x time minus whatever minus you know another ten minutes. So it's like the the, the amount of time it takes to mix it Why up. Why don't you just tell everyone it. when to drink it if they're gonna roll? Or do something active. Oh, I, the thing is, I don't you're know. You're saying I'm 40 minutes? You're saying half an hour? 40 minutes, half an hour. I'm saying I'll, 40 minutes I'll to half an hour. I'll drink mine as I leave the house. So I'll have my and cup. What's the, how long does it take to get here? 
15, between 15 and 20 minutes. Okay. So, but you don't need it to kick in right when you get here because you're going to be chatting with people for the first correct. half hour. <laughs> correct. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Check. Well, it's one of those things. It's not like there's this little teeny tiny window of it working. But once yeah. it's in the in the system, right, yeah. you're rolling. You're rolling. You know? you're oh, rolling yeah. Good. I, you don't even really like feel it like wear off or nothing like a coffee crash or nothing like that. Yeah. So I don't know. I just do it that way. That's been Check. and it's worked like, man, I'll, I won't not do it that way. Yeah. I'm That's in the way that to go zone 100%. right now. Yeah. Uh, also, don't forget about Mulk. Which is if you need extra protein, which you do, you can get it from Mulk. Or if you just want a straight up dessert, you right. can just have dessert. Yep. And if you don't think the strawberry Mulk tastes like dessert, you're wrong. Yep. The strawberry Mulk is dessert. Yep. Get some. And so are the other ones. I've just had so much of them. I'm just really stoked on the strawberry right now. Mint. You know what Pe- it was? Was your go-to peanut butter or is it mint? Mint. But yeah. I'll, I'll interchange for variety, whatever. That strawberry one came in. Thanks, Brian, yeah. for that. By the way, so it's like okay, you know, Neither. strawberry slayer. There's a lot of hype. Yeah. It's strawberry, cool. I'm not the hugest. Um, like I like I you like the strawberry. Now. I like it. Yeah. But when there's chocolate, like why would you do strawberry? You know, if you if you have chocolate yeah. or whatever. So I'm like, but whatever, let's do it. The strawberry was is so mix it up, boom. The, the same deal. I didn't want to like add extra stuff in there. Mm. I just I wanted the raw deal, so I had regular milk and strawberry milk. Yeah. See what the hype's all about. Surprisingly, surprisingly good. Meaning, and I don't, you know, that's a general term. Surprisingly good or whatever. To me, st- the strawberry milk tastes closer to an actual strawberry milkshake. The only difference that I could detect is that it's not as like overtly sweet as like one from like a, you know, like you get a strawberry milkshake yeah. from a f- place. Yeah. You know, it just wasn't as sweet as that. That's put, it. Put a little, put another half a scoop in there, and you'll be in the zone. That's what bro. I thought. I'm yeah, telling you. That, and that's what I'm I figured. telling you what. So I, I, I implemented the Get that hitter, the real litmus <laughs> test, right? So I, what do you call? It? Enlist the kids. Yeah. Right? Have them sit down. I was like, all right, here, this is strawberry milk. Have some, just a little thing. So here's how you do it. You don't say, is it good? Is it not good? Because if so they're not say, into do the, you t- want more. You don't even ask that. What you just you wait. Oh. So, because if you ask, hey, is it good or not good? They're, if they're old enough, they'll tell you what you want to hear. They'll be like, yeah, good. Then they'll go play. Or they won't be into the test at all, which typically they're not. And they'll just be like, no, it's junk. Therefore, you know, in their mind, he won't give me anymore or whatever. You know, you just don't get an action, action, uh, an accurate reading. So what you do is, so here, you can have some of this. That's it. So they tasted it. Both of them wanted more. Mm-hmm. Both of them. Yeah, that's Six-year-old, it's a miracle. Two-year-old. Yeah. That's good. what it is. Really good stuff. Uh, so, and also don't forget you got Warrior Kid Mulk. That comes in strawberry and chocolate as well. And it's, it's, it's like legitimately good for your children. So get it for them. Oh, yeah. Also Jocko White Tea. Yes. Jocko has some tea. It's called Jocko White Tea. Yeah. And it just is like drinking goodness. That's what it is. Like drinking victory. Drinking it tastes victory. Like it tastes victory. like victory, and it's just goodness. Got antioxidants. Gets you a little. Gets you a little kicker. Certified organic too, by the way. Yeah, yeah. So that's that. Anyway, really cool. Good. Originmain.com. Forgot to say that. Yes. Also, Jocko has his own store, Jocko Store. So you go to JockoStore.com. This is where you can get your Discipline Equals Freedom shirts, hoodies, lightweight and heavyweight hats. You know, anyway, heavyweight hats. N- no, you know, no heavyweight hats. Um, you know, but you do have those trucker hats with the what do you call it? Snap back mm-hmm. or flex fit. So some options there. Mm-hmm. Anyway, any way you want to represent the path, you can get something there. Rash guards as well, jujitsu or whatever you're doing. Boom. You can get a one of those. shirt that says "good" on it that does not have my head on it, which is a positive thing. Moving in a different direction, more subtle direction. N- I don't necessarily agree because I think that the one with your head on it is like that's not very subtle, bro. No, it's not subtle at all. But <laughs> it it does like no, they both have their benefits. Because look, when I wear the good one, just yeah. just good. Yeah. Like the the people who do say something, they're just kind of like, oh yeah, good, good. They'll just say it, you know. But the one with your head, they'll either ask, oh, who's that on your mm-hmm. shirt? Like, who is that? Usually, it's like I don't know, you know. Winston Churchill or so, I don't know. You yeah. wear a public figure on there. So they're wondering who is that and why that <laughs> don't they Churchill know. Winston Churchill t-shirts. I don't know. We got to do that now. <laughs> it's the first thing they came to mind. And yeah. I've or, never seen a Winston Churchill t-shirt, but I'm glad that we got that <laughs> going. You need it. All right. Check. None, nonetheless, or they'll know who you are 
and they know that that's what you say and they'll be like you know what do you call it the book the one they know and you know bona fides yes exactly yeah. right so i dig both 100 percent. but cool. nonetheless a lot of cool stuff on there if you uh if you like something get something as they say also subscribe to the podcast if you haven't already on itunes and stitcher and wherever you listen to podcasts because a lot of places they're trying to kind of change the landscape of podcast listening too by the way oh yeah yeah they want to charge money or something put it behind the firewall <laughs> pay i think it's paywall paywall maybe, maybe the firewall too the firewall the paywall anyways we're free we're free yeah we're free but Nonetheless, hey, it is no, what it is. No, you have to pay. You know what you have to pay? You have to listen to this part of the podcast, <laughs> which you don't actually even have to do. Yeah, I know. That's Optional. The pay. It's like one yeah. of those little trays. Don't forget about the Warrior Kid podcast, which is also not behind a paywall. It's free for your children. If your kids want to learn how to be on the path, if your kids want to learn about discipline, if your kids want to learn how to handle bullying and trouble in school and trouble study, if they want to learn to handle all that stuff in life, and if you want to get a little hint too, because you know you need it, and get some of that Warrior Kid podcast. Yeah, that's a good one. Also, IrishOaksRanch.com. This is where you can get Warrior Kid soap. Yeah. Which is not War- for kids. It's, yeah, it's actually it's it's Jocko soap made by a Warrior Kid. So that's it is Warrior it is. Kid soap called Jocko soap. There's yeah. another edition called yeah. Trooper soap. Or is it the Trooper bar? Trooper soap, I think. Yeah, nonetheless, it's it's good. Yeah. Yeah, this is good soap. Stay also, clean. Yes. It'll help you stay clean. It'll make you stay clean. Mm-hmm. Straight up. In a hardcore kind of way. Also, YouTube. If you're interested in the video version of this podcast of Jocko telling us, helping us, advising us, do you advise? I'm just over here saying my point of view, I guess, yeah. more than anything else. Yeah. And then and then Echo makes videos that he's super proud of and he's all hype about and he thinks they're super cool, so you can check those out too. <laughs> Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Nonetheless, yes, YouTube, Jocko Podcast YouTube channel. We yeah, do yeah. have one. It's a yeah. good one. We do have I our own good. YouTube channel. Yes. You can sign up for little announcements sure. that come out. Notifications. So I have that. So whenever you post a video, I get a notification. Yeah. And I go, oh, cool. Echo posted a video. Sure. And I watch it. Yeah. And then I go down and read the comments. <laughs> See, yeah. And then someone says, Echo's looking jerked. Yep. So there's Be- that. Best comment in the world, by the yeah. way. Yeah, and then Psychological Warfare. You can get that if you need a little little assistance during a challenging moment of weakness. If you press play on your phone, you can play a little track that will get you through that moment of weakness. It's on iTunes, Google Play, MP3 platforms of all kinds. And if you want a visual representation to help keep you on the path, check out flipsidecanvas.com where my brother, Dakota Meyer, is making art. And he's with putting layers. On, and he's putting in the art with layers, that's what it is. There you go, you just, you just coined it, you just made the motto. Yeah. Art with layers. We're going to put some Warrior Kid stuff up there for your kids' okay. rooms. We're going to put some Warrior Kid things up there. So be checking that out. And if you have anything that you want to have on a canvas, let Dakota Meyer know. Let him up on Twitter. Tell him what's going on. Tell him what you think. He can make he can make it happen. Oh, yeah. So there's that. Also, on it, on it.com. So this is where you can get your kettlebells when you're when we are varying up our workouts you need more kettlebells you need more functional fitness type stuff that's where you get it also like i mentioned before the the mineral slash uh, electrolyte mix for mm-hmm. the pre jujitsu actually pre-workout too mega mix this is where you get it on it.com slash jocko what if you i mean you don't you know what a pre-workout is it's called a pre-workout yeah it's like it has like uh, like yeah. vasodilators and caffeine and yeah. stuff in it. It's, it's mainly for like lifting or whatever. Yeah. You can mix that. If you work out, don't do Metcons on this. But no. if you're just lifting for like hypertrophy or whatever mm-hmm. and you like pre-workouts, you mix that in the Mega Mix. So you go pre-workout, discipline, two scoops, one scoop electrolytes from on it, um, lemon juice, water. Mix that. Report back. Ooh, that's the mega mix right there for lifting. For measure, your, measure your biceps. Report back. Yes. <laughs> yeah, your pump will be out of this world. But before jujitsu, don't do the, the pre-workout. Don't do the caffeine before jujitsu. That's my thing. Uh, anyway, on it.com slash Jocko is where you get it. Got some books. Got some books coming out. I got one book coming out called 
War, Way of the Warrior Kid 3, Where There's a Will. Uh, I think when this podcast out, we might even be live or close to it. Yeah. So, Way of the Warrior Kid 3, order it immediately. I just uh, got the numbers prior to walking in here. It's already selling like pretty awesome. So, I appreciate everyone pre ordering it. But if you want it, order it now so I can print enough for you because the publishing company is Jocko Publishing. Also, we got Way of the Warrior Kid 1. We got Way of the Warrior Kid 2, subtitle, Mark's Mission. Way of the Warrior, Way of the Warrior Kid 1, subtitle, is From Wimpy to Warrior, The Navy Seal Way. Teach your kids to be on the path. And if you got a little bit younger kid, get Mikey and the Dragons. Mike and the Dragons will frame your child's mind to be able to overcome fear for the rest of their lives. Just a nice little thing to give them. For the rest of your life, you don't have to be afraid of anything. There you go. There you go, child. You're welcome. Discipline equals freedom. Field manual. That's how to get after it. The audio of that is on iTunes, Amazon Music, Google Play, and other MP3. Extreme Ownership and Dichotomy of Leadership. Both those books I wrote with my brother Leif Babin. And we take the experiences we had in combat overseas, the leadership lessons we learned, and we pass them on to all of you. Also, we have Echelon Front, which is our leadership consultancy. And what we do is we solve problems through leadership. And if you want to have us come and work with your company, then go to echelonfront.com. If you want to come to a live experience, you can come to the muster. May 23rd and 24th in Chicago, sold out. You won't be coming to that one. September 19th and 20th in Denver, not sold out yet, but it will. And December 4th and 5th in Sydney, Australia, go to extremeownership.com. All of them have sold out, all of them will sell out. So get in the game early. EF Online, this is our, if you can't make it to the muster, but you want to get granular with your leadership capabilities, then go to efonline.com and we will take you through leadership courses that will pragmatically improve your leadership skills. There's interactive decisions you have to make in those courses. So check it out, efonline.com and then EF Overwatch if you are a business person and you are looking for leaders, which is what you need in your company, you need leadership. If you want leadership in your company, we have special operations and combat aviation veterans, and we are getting them placed into your company. So go to EF Overwatch if you are looking for leaders in your company. And if you want to cruise hard more with us on the interwebs, Twitter, Instagram, and on Facebook, of course, I'm at Echo Charles, and Jocko is at Jocko Willink. What are the three platforms? Twitter, Instagram, and then Facebook. That What's Facebook that last one? Kibola. Oh, okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Mm. I, didn't, I wasn't quite sure what you said. All right. And thanks to everyone out there that wears the cloth of our nation a military uniform. Thank you for your sacrifice. And thanks to your families as well, who also sacrifice to keep the nation safe. And thanks to police, law enforcement, firefighters, paramedics, EMTs, dispatchers, correctional officers, border patrol, secret service, all first responders for what you do every day. And thanks to your families as well for supporting you so that you all can support us and everyone else out there, remember that life goes by like a summer day. And you don't have time to get hung up on failures. You don't have time to dwell in the past. And you can't preserve the memories perfectly. So make sure you get out there every day and you make new memories by moving forward and getting after it. And until next time, this is Echo and Jocko, out.